Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the command access CDL-BLK. That's a concealed door loop and a black finish is what it is. This is a nifty little uh, concealed way to relatively inexpensively transfer power from a frame to a door. Um, super neat little idea. I, I I would think that these could be a little bit less expensive, honestly, um, given the fact that an armored door loop that's 24 inch in length or 18 inch in length is half the cost of this. Um, but it, you know, listen, it's a prepackaged item. It's ready to roll. It's super cool. You don't ever see it when the door is closed. Um, it's inexpensive, a lot less expensive than a electric transfer hinge. Uh, why not just use a hinge? Well, because maybe you have an application that there is no hinge that you can use as an electric transfer hinge. And what I mean by that would be uh, maybe an unusual hinge by a residential door manufacturer. Some of these residential door manufacturers have these highly unusual hinges that you can't mix and match other hinges with. There's no electric transfer option in some uh, items. And if I don't forget, I'll show you an example of that. Um, and you might just get away with something like this. Drill a hole in the door and frame pass the low voltage wires through, secure the mounting flanges to each side of the door and frame, you know, and as the door and frame close, <clears throat> do it like this, doors closed, doors opened, doors closed, doors opened, okay? Pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, let's take some basic dimensional properties of the item, then we'll dig into the installation instructions that are here. The OD of the flexible conduit is 0 0.365, 0 0.365. The ID of the orifice of where the wires will come through is 0 0.234, 0 0.234. So you ought to be able to fit through, um, you know, a good quantity of, of 22 gauge, even 28 gauge wires through there, okay? Um, the overall length, we can measure that as well. About five and five and three quarter inches, you can see. Stainless flexible conduit. Okay. Now, included with this will be the screws that you'll need for attaching it. Those flanges. You will get installation instructions. These are linked to down below. So let's switch now to the screen view and let's take a closer look at all of the supporting documentation. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here is the item that we are indeed looking at, CDL BLK. Concealed door loop, six inch length, black finish end caps, supports up to 180 degree swing. Um, yeah, I would have no problem with that at all. Um, obviously your vertical axis of pivoting it can't be um, anything other than a standard hinge. You're not going to have a wide throw hinge. Um, you know, when I take this, this and I contort it to what would be required for 180 degree, the center to center of the leads is 3 inch. So what I'm driving at here is... What I'm driving at here is this. Is three inch. Okay, and there ain't no way to stretch that out any further. You, nor can you make it smaller. So. Um, you know, be mindful. Uh, that's where you're, that, that's where that's going to require. Uh, you will have to take your installation and judge where your vertical axis of pivoting is going to be to make sure that that's going to work. 
but the hardware itself will go to go to 180 provided you do that press fit no wires uh, pr uh, so press fit you'll drill a hole and then you'll push those flanges into the holes no wires are included also available in the aluminum finish a couple of cut sheets down below we'll get to that in a moment um, obviously this is what the unit looks like okay cut sheet is here let's go over that now the patented concealed door loop is a low-cost method of transferring low voltage power from the frame to the locking device typical door loops are surface mounted that's for sure um, They do look like that. Let's see if we can. There's a picture of one in action. So, you know, that works, but quite frankly, they could have used the CDL here, most likely. Um, you know, if they've got power coming in here, they could have gotten it from the backside. Possibly. I'm wondering that that's likely possible. You know, here would be a, a perfect example for it as well. Avoid that being seen on the face of the door. You know, go with something that's concealed. You know, a lot less expensive than a hinge. Would it work work here? Yeah, possibly. You know, it, it, it possibly could. Uh, okay, so... Typical door loops are surface mounted and remain constantly visible and subject to vandalism. The CDL slides into the door and or frame, completely concealing itself when the door is closed, designed for continuous and butt hinge applications that are either full mortise, half mortise, half surface, and have a standard throw. Okay, so they're addressing that. You get to a wide throw hinge, and it'll work. It just ain't going to go to 180 um, degree. Uh, that's to be sure. Commonly installed were electric transfer hinges. Hinges are cost prohibitive, and surface door loops are not desired. CDL's aesthetic appeal will benefit retrofits and new installations alike. Available in aluminum or black finishes, durable, easy to install, variable mounting location, sure, install it wherever you like. What, what's actually really nice about that is when they say variable mounting locations, I happen to be doing a project for a client um, at a very, very high-end boutique in Boston for a very, very, very high-end watch manufacturer from Switzerland. Doesn't narrow it down, but think of the name that you're already thinking of. And this boutique in Boston, they have eight-foot tall doors. Actually, they're, they're a weird size. They're, you know, eight-foot four and a quarter, Some, something, something just not really typical. Well, we're going with four hinges. We're going with heavyweight butt hinges. Our exit device is going to be right here. Okay, so where do you put the electric transfer hinge? Well, I would want to put it here. It's closer when we laid out the hinge locations um, to where it's going to be required than this hinge. Plus, putting an electric transfer hinge down as close to the floor as possible is desirable because. An electric transfer hinge is not load bearing. So two two things that are in play here. The CDL from Command Access will let you put that right here. No worried about getting up. Uh, you know, how am I gonna drill this? Um, I got a hole here. Am I gonna try to do this with a drill bit? Not sure how that's gonna work. Um, number one. Number two is when you're not using electric hinges, you are not sacrificing the load bearing capability of a standard hinge because you're not trading it in for an electric transfer hinge. These are, this client's doors are actually two and nine sixteenths thick. Um, they're, they're about 268 pounds we figured. So going with five inch tall heavyweights um, and we're losing capacity of one of them because of an electric transfer hinge. The CDL is a cheap solution that does not force you to give any any yardage, so to speak. Okay. Um, quarter inch flexible armored conduit supports 180 degree swing. 
Yeah, I mean, I suppose they could do something unusual if they had a slightly longer length. They've obviously tested that. Longer lengths might be troublesome in getting the conduit to telescope back into where it belongs. Maybe six inches the sweet spot for that. They can do a fixed side where you're not going to be um, having the conduit push back into something. Uh, and what I mean by that is, let's say that you have a, well, let me, let's do this. So this client that I was referring to earlier with these unusual hinges, they have these hinges manufactured from some manufacturer of um, residential hinge uh, doors and frames. There is, there is no electric transfer hinge that looks like these, these hinges is the bottom line. So having one side fixed, uh, what I'm driving at, unusual hinge, is here in the sense that behind the wood frame, there's masonry. So you'd want one side fixed to force the other side to always telescope into the door, is what you would want, in my opinion, what you'd want to do. This client was attempting to make this hinge that they bought work for their application, but because the vertical axis of pivoting was so out of alignment, they would need to very severely uh, mortise the door to get the vertical axis of pivoting lined up. Okay. And that's the point at which I recommended to this client the CDL, uh, concealed door loop. So I would, I would fix one side. Um, I'm showing you the application where you can't use an electric hinge and saying because that jam was butted up against masonry, I would have... Um, fixed one side for that client. Now there's also installation instructions. These are included with the uh, hardware. Okay, do not proceed without regarding this section of the instructions. Great. Okay, so this talks about my initial concern. Be sure the opening does not exceed 180. When the door is closed, the total length of the CDL will be concealed in a combined space within the door and frame. Make sure there is ample space for the CDL armored cable to move freely. Okay, so what they're saying here is when you prep the door and frame, you're going to need to make sure that you can um, leave yourself enough room you know, whatever hole size you can drill here and here, the total of A and B I think what they're saying has to equal six inch, okay? <laughs> you don't want to crush your conduit because it's bare, bottoming out. Be sure to select a location on the CDL uh, on the door that will not compromise the structural integrity when drilling the 5 8 hole. Be sure to select a location on the frame for the same. Wire cable must slide freely within the CDL's armored cable. So your... Um, you know, what you're wiring, uh, that cable has to be able to, you're going to have to have some spare cable in there as well, is what I'm saying. You're going to have to have room for your cable to, to move along with it, meaning your wires, your 22 gauge, your 28 gauge, your 18 gauge wires. Okay. With the door partially open, mark and measure the distance on, at the requ uh, desired location. Drill a 5 8 hole in the door and frame. Uh, what they're saying here is insert one end of the CDL into the door and mark the screw holes at 3 and 9 and then at 6 and 12 so that your flanges don't overlap each other like this. So the screw heads will kind of make contact. You don't want that. Use a 332nd or actually a number 43 for pre-drilling those holes. Insert the cable through the CDL and make any required wire terminations. Install the door side of the CDL install the frame side. Carefully open and close the door to make sure everything moves really uh, slick. Uh, for three-quarter inch offset, see those installation instructions. This is not them. Okay. Pretty simple and straightforward. You know, you're not really going to have to have, you know, they're, they're mentioning wire slack, and you're going to need some wire slack, obviously. But, um, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the 
co the conduit sliding over the wire being pulled by the door when it opens. All right, I think we've covered this. It's you know I would I would definitely read the instructions once before you started doing anything, um, and then just proceed cautiously. Now there is below this video here a link to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the command access products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as seen here, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Let's take a look at some photographs that I have of this before we proceed. And here they are. The packaging. Everything you get. The back side, then the front side. The two flanges just brought together. That's what it looks like when it's going to be basically in a, in a standard orientation of, you know, um, 135 degree, I suppose. And there's that screw package there. Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, now also th there are two of these on this client's order. And uh, without showing you the shop drawings for the client's order, they are having manufactured two custom steel entrances. Uh, rectangular tube, two inch thick, six inch wide, eighth of an inch wall thickness, long lengths of steel. Everything's going to be cut. Um, everything's going to be welded together. The client is running electrified hardware. And the client reached out to us. He has a fabricator making all this custom material. And the fabricator, quite frankly, um, doesn't have the ability to, or maybe the desire to, express the design of the opening uh, in a written format. The, client, I'm, the client's uh, fabricator, I'm sure, is a gifted welder and whatnot, and I'm sure it'll all look beautiful. But when you're trying to incorporate hardware into something that someone's building, you have to see what all that's about. So this client wanted a very clean look, hardly no exposed hardware. Uh, we were able to get him away from a mortise lock with trim or an electric strike to an electric deadbolt that's being installed in this, you know, four foot by nine foot, six inch, two inch steel that's going to be full light. Um, get them into an electric deadbolt uh, by SDC. Get them into um, the uh, a, a push button so that he can unlock it from the inside. Key on the outside, only a cylinder. But we really needed a way for him to get power to that lock. And you know the fabricator said, yeah, you know, you'll surface mount the wiring. You put some snap molding over this and that. No, we don't want any of that. I can't imagine what you know, two inch by six inch custom fabricated opening that's 12 foot tall or 14 foot tall, you know, nine foot wide, all that's going to cost. So, you know, here you go. Okay, drill a couple of holes. You can fish the wire through. This is how you're going to finish it off. Don't involve the fabricator. Just make these preparations before you install the structure into the opening. And uh, it'll be beautiful. You know, um, why not just use a hinge? Well, the primary reason is this door will be so heavy that the fabricator has an integrated two knuckle surface mounted hinge system that's welded on and I had suggested sauce hinges because they'll be concealed and handle the weight again beyond the capability the skill set of the fabricator so we stuck with the hinges that he had and um, the vertical axis of pivoting will not give us trouble with the positioning of this conduit um, and uh, hopefully it'll all work out really well so if you have any questions on the command access CDL, concealed door loop, or any other command access product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.